Welcome back, folks. 22 forgotten sodas we want back surely bubbles up the nostalgia, right? Hop on our retro refreshment as we revisit the fizzy champions of the good old days. Visualize the excitement of tasting tab for the first time or sharing a new Coke at a roller disco. From after-school meetups to epic road trips, these sodas sweetened life's moments. So grab your glass, it's time to toast to the classics. Rewind to 1985, when Coca-Cola ventured into new territory with New Coke, a sweeter variant that stirred up soda history. This bold move was Coca-Cola's response to the Pepsi Challenge taste tests that threatened its market dominance, sparking one of the biggest controversies in consumer history. While its reception was mixed, it developed a devoted fan base, highlighting the complexities of changing a beloved formula. This chapter serves as a reminder of how deeply a brand can resonate with its audience. Pepsi introduced Pepsi Light in 1975, capturing the essence of the era with its lemon-flavored Diet Cola. Distinguished by its unique blend of cola and a lemon twist, Pepsi Light aimed to offer a diet option with a flavorful edge. It was the go-to soda for the aerobics crowd, riding high on the wave of the 70s fitness craze. Yet by the 1980s, a change in formula led to a decline in its popularity, a testament to the fleeting nature of taste trends. 1995 saw Royal Crown Draft Cola stepping into the world of artisanal soda, brewed in small batches to capture the essence of traditional methods. Royal Crown Cola, established in 1905, ventured into this niche market to showcase its craft in soda making. Its commitment to natural flavors and no preservatives set a new standard. This innovative attempt, though not long-lasting, carved a niche in cola history, reimagining the possibilities of soda flavors and quality. Then 1987 brought us 7-Up Gold, a twist to the soda world with its ginger, apple, and cinnamon fusion. Standing out with its unique flavor profile, it aimed to offer a distinct taste experience from the usual citrus or cola sodas. Its catchy, contradictory slogan regarding caffeine, never had it, never will, intrigued many. Although its time was brief, this golden beverage left a lasting impression with its rich, spicy flavor. It defied soda norms and is still cherished by those who crave a sip of soda nostalgia. In 1963, Coca-Cola's tab set the stage for diet sodas, becoming a staple in the 60s and 70s. Known for its distinctive metallic taste, tab was Coca-Cola's first venture into the diet soda market. Its unique flavor profile and standout pink can remain in the hearts of many, even as Diet Coke became the new favorite in the 80s. Tab's legacy lasted until 2020, marking its place as an enduring favorite that symbolized the diet revolution of its time. Nihai, launched in 1924, introduced a new era of fruit-flavored sodas with standout favorites like peach, grape, and orange. Endorsed by famous personalities and featured in various media, Nihai's visibility helped it gain a significant market presence. Its colorful and distinctive glass bottles became a visual trademark. This brand not only captured audiences but also marked a shift in soda preferences towards diverse, bold flavors. Today, Nihai stands as a testament to innovation in the soft drink industry. Bubbling up since 1889, Shasta has serenaded generations with its diverse flavor symphony. Originally starting as a mineral spring water company, it smoothly transitioned into offering a wide range of soda flavors. More than just affordable, it was a cheerful part of daily life. I want a pop, I want a Shasta wasn't just a jingle, it was a call to joy for those who remember this beloved brand. It served as a fizzy flashback to the good old days, renowned for its variety and value. Squirt, the grapefruit gem of 1938, originated from Herb Bishop's experiments in Phoenix, Arizona, creating a grapefruit juice-based soft drink. Celebrated for its crisp and slightly tart flavor, Squirt became a popular mixer in cocktails. This refreshing burst became an iconic thirst quencher on hot days. Its slogan, its Squirt for Thirst, rang true across the Southwest where it was a poolside favorite. This citrus star of the soda world still shines today, a sparkling tribute to the sunny days of yesteryear. Turn the clock back to 1876 with Heyer's Root Beer, the original American soda superstar. This creamy concoction wasn't just a drink, it was a staple at family picnics, with a taste as classic as apple pie. Introduced at the Philadelphia Centennial Exhibition, it quickly became America's favorite. With a slogan that sang, Hires makes thirst a joy. It was a timeless tune in our taste buds, now missing from our shelves like a favorite old record we can't play anymore. 
Fast forward to the 1970s, and Welch's grape soda is turning every can into a summer vineyard escape. Originating from a company known for its grape juices, Welch's soda brought the same quality to carbonated beverages. While Welch's continues to quench grape cravings, those who remember the original recipe savor a nostalgia that's as rich as the grapes themselves. Known for its bold, concord grape flavor, it was like a liquid vacation, a shortcut to sunny days and laughter. It's a taste that danced on our tongues and left footprints in our memories. Step into a 1930s diner, and you'd find frosty root beer pouring nostalgia with every creamy sip. With its original recipe boasting traditional root beer spices, Frosty offered an authentic taste of Americana. Introduced by the Frosty Company in 1939, this beverage quickly became a staple of American refreshment. Reminiscent of time spent in diners and drive-ins, its charming packaging and taste are a throwback to a bygone era, continuing to delight generations with its nostalgic appeal. Zoom to 1985, and here comes Jolt Cola, shaking up the soda scene with a caffeine-charged promise, all the sugar and twice the caffeine. A favorite of night shifters and study marathoners, its legacy endures as the precursor to today's energy drinks, a testament to the days when one soda could fuel an all-nighter. Jolt Cola boldly broke the mold, setting a new standard for caffeinated beverages. Surge came crashing in like a tidal wave in 1997, Coca-Cola's citrus answer to the extreme sports frenzy. Inspired by Norway's urge, Surge was designed for the American market with a bolder taste and more caffeine. With its vibrant citrus flavor and adrenaline pumping ads, it quickly became the go-to soda for thrill-seeking teens. Despite its initial popularity, Surge's appeal waned as the millennium turned, eventually leading to its discontinuation, leaving a legacy of bold marketing and intense flavor. Slice burst onto the scene in 1984, PepsiCo's answer to a growing demand for healthier sodas, offering a real fruit juice blend. It was a novel approach at the time, aiming to offer a healthier alternative within the soda category. With more fruit juice and less sugar, it wasn't just a drink, it was a movement. Its time in the limelight has passed, but its role as a forerunner in fruitier sodas lingers in our memories. This paves the way for the juice-infused sodas we see today. Crystal Pepsi, introduced by PepsiCo in 1992, was a transparent twist on traditional cola, leveraging Van Halen's hit Right Now in its marketing campaign. This clear cola aimed to capitalize on a growing trend towards purity and health in beverages. Despite its initial buzz and consumer intrigue, it struggled to maintain interest and was discontinued by 1994. Its comeback years later was a nostalgic nod, reliving its brief sparkle in the cola world, but with similar short-lived fame. Orbitz was released in 1997 by the Clearly Canadian Beverage Corporation and ventured where no soda had before. Each bottle contained floating gelatin balls, offering a distinct lava lamp look. This innovative beverage combined fruit flavors with a visually stunning presentation, making it more than just a drink, but a novelty. Even with its eye-catching appeal, it was perhaps too ahead of its time, leading to its 1998 discontinuation a brief but memorable moment in soda history. Now imagine it's 1963, and Patio by Pepsi is throwing the grooviest backyard shindig in a bottle, later evolving into what we know today as Diet Pepsi. Initially introduced to cater to consumers seeking low-calorie options, it featured flavors like grape and orange. It wasn't just a diet soda, it was a lifestyle, a fizzy embodiment of the swinging 60s. Even the suave Mad Men couldn't resist its charm. Remember Patio. It was the taste of a generation, a fizzy footnote in soda history. Aspen, Pepsi's crisp apple concoction launched in 1978, was like a winter ski trip in a can. Lasting until 1982, its Snap of Apple slogan captured imaginations, positioning it as the Apre Ski refreshment. This short-lived gem had a flavor as unique as a snowflake, still missed by its fans. Reminiscent of cool breezes and warmer days, it was a pioneer in apple-flavored sodas. Quirst, arriving in the late 70s, was a lemonade-flavored soda with a jingle that stuck, whenever I want to quench my thirst, I feel like a Quirst. Introduced during a time when the market was ripe for innovation, it aimed to offer a refreshing alternative to traditional colas. Marketed as a healthier alternative with less sugar than traditional sodas, it was perfect for lazy summer days. 
Despite its catchy appeal, Quirst's time in the soda market was as fleeting as a summer breeze, a testament to the ever-changing tastes of the American public. In 1993, Coca-Cola unveiled OK Soda, targeting the youth with its quirky, non-conformist branding. Designed to appeal to Generation X with its anti-commercial ethos, OK Soda featured candid and often ironic marketing. The soda featured a blend of fruit flavors, different from typical colas, and unique, artsy can designs. Despite its novel approach and attempts to resonate with a younger demographic, it was discontinued in 1995, marking a brief foray into alternative marketing strategies in the soda industry. In the 1970s, worms wiggled into the soda market with a name that raised eyebrows but a cherry flavor that raised glasses. Inspired perhaps by the 1973 children's book, How to Eat Fried Worms, it stood out in an era of flavor experimentation. Today, with exotic tastes trending, worms could wriggle back into the market, proving that sometimes a name is just a playful hook. Enjoyed this trip through Soda's history? Check out our next video for more insights. Remember to like and subscribe for more.